Well, we're in Mendocino today at the Stanford Inn by the Sea. Beautiful place right south of the town of Mendocino. Fantastic vegetarian cuisine, beautiful grounds covered with all kinds of gardens and wild and tame animals. Joan and Jeff are the proprietors. We're gonna meet Jeff right now and he's gonna take us up. Great Hi. place you have here, man. This place is fantastic. Well, thank you. Really gorgeous. Anybody coming by the coast better not miss this place. Well, they sometimes do, but oh, thank yeah. you very much. It's gorgeous. You got some really neat places here. So I have to come on down to the main building? Beautiful. Let's check it out. Feel like we're in Fantasy Island. <laughs> My name is Jeff Stanford and my wife and I own the Stanford Inn by the Sea Big River Lodge, which we bought 24 years ago when it was a motel. Today it's a bed and breakfast resort, which is an unusual uh, kind of combination. We're most known for our gardens. We're a certified organic farm and most of our produce goes into our restaurant. We have 41 rooms most of which are in the forest building and in the big river building. And they all have wood-burning fireplaces, which is the first thing we did when we came here. We want to have a more natural and authentic experience for our guests. All the rooms, of course, have feather beds. The typical bed and breakfast um, kind of an arrangement with mat, mat lasses and down comforters, coffee makers with our own uh, specially made blend of Big River, fair trade, organic coffees. Shortly after moving here, like within 15 minutes, we made the entire inn pet friendly. All our rooms accept pets. We feel that they're part of people's family. We also accept children. Most people treat their pets sometimes better than their children, we found out. When somebody checks in with their pet, we'll provide um, stainless steel bowls so that they're clean uh, and won't carry anything from another pet for food and water, sheets and or covers to protect the furniture if their dog likes to get up on their, on their furniture with them, as well as dog treats, of course, and we give a different treat every day. And we've had pets from iguanas to a pot-bellied pig to a tortoise to any variety of dogs and parrots and other kinds of rare birds. If a guest likes to eat with their dog, there's a special section of our lobby that's just for families and pets. For the general um, ambience and luxury, uh, we do this to combine it with an organic restaurant that serves primarily vegetarian and vegan food, and the breakfasts are entirely um, part of the stay for our guests. Years ago, we discovered that um, people feel good in a pine, a room in, paneled in pine. We have a variety of different kinds of rooms, from uh, three suites that have their own kitchens to rooms with two bedroom, two bath suites, um, which have fireplaces in the second bedroom, which is a master bedroom. We do a lot of weddings. Um, I'm a minister, actually, and, do, and I'll do most of them myself. And we try to tailor each wedding to the, to the needs of the, the guests. We have kayaking, canoeing. We have specially made uh, boats for us that are Redwood Outrigger canoes with sails. What's really the most important to Joan and myself is that we model uh, an easier way of living on the land by having the organic gardens and uh, by using no herbicides or pesticides, by recycling everything from the, the man-made objects, materials such as cardboard and paper and tin cans and, and uh, aluminum and bottles to every bit of organic waste. Every bit of that is composted in and reused, recycled into our gardens. And then we're vegetarian and pre predominantly vegan in our dining room and we are very careful about the ingredients that we buy. They have to be organic or I'm not happy. 
um, and we want to serve food that we would only serve to our family normally, you know, and what we make no compromise for our dining room at all. One of the most interesting things that happens for us here is that we have the vegetarian and vegan restaurant and we really try and work uh, extremely care closely with um, our chefs to provide the, the highest quality, um, most interesting food that we can. And um, we have this Four Diamond Resort, little resort, and people come and they um, are tired when they arrive here. And so often they have no interest in eating at a vegetarian vegan restaurant and um, they decide that they will eat the first night simply because they're too tired to drive. So they come in, they have dinner, and then they come by the desk and they say, wow, that was really great, we'll make reservations for tomorrow, and then we know we've done well. We know that we're convincing people in a subtle way uh, that this is a healthy and enjoyable way to eat and live. Well, we're about to go meet the pastry chef, Andrew, and the chef de cuisine, Gunner. We're going to see what they're preparing in the kitchen tonight, what kind of vegan, vegetarian, gourmet fare they have. So, Jeff, you ready to go check these guys out? Let's go. Out of sight. Let's go see them. That's Merlin. That's Merlin. Working his magic. How's it going, Merlin? All right. Oh, Gunner, we're here finally. Ah, oh, Gunner, how's it going? Uh, my name is Gunner Thompson. Um, I've been the chef de cuisine here at the Ravens Restaurant for four years. I've been cooking professionally for 12 years now. Um, I have a culinary degree. Um, I'm a vegetarian also. I've been a vegetarian for eight years. Um, but this is the first professional job I've ever had, vegetarian cooking. Uh, vegetarian fine dining is a, a new thing to this world and it's not, uh, hasn't, the footprints haven't been set in, in stone yet. So. Uh, we have the chance to create new dishes and be very creative on a daily basis and go ahead and use our garden facility here, you know, which is a, a great thing. Here at the, from our gardens, we, we are lucky enough to have a very knowledgeable garden staff in which they, they find all kinds of native plants here and non-native plants that we can go ahead and use in our cooking. And here we are in the organic garden, and I'm going to pick some fresh corn for our fresh corn sopes. Now I'm going to pick some tomatillos for our, our salsa verde. Now we're going to go make our dishes. And now we're going to start with our fig salad. Um, and initially we're going to start with some chioga beets fresh from our garden. And toss them in a little olive oil, salt, and pepper and just blend those to combine and placing them in a foil packet so uh, that the beets steam and keep all their nutritional and moisture content. And now we're going to place them in the oven. Now
Next, I'm going to prep the, the fresh figs. Uh, they, they're beautiful and simply just need to be halved. And now this lavender is going to mix in with this honey. We're just going to prick off a few flowers of the lavender with a paring knife. And then we're going to mix in some fresh thyme that's already been picked. And we're going to add a, a touch of red wine vinegar to counteract the sweetness. Now we're going to make our salad dressing. First, we're going to start with a little more red wine vinegar. Uh, a couple tablespoons by the eye there. Um, we're going to season that with a little salt and black pepper. And we're going to add uh, oh, a small teaspoon of uh, fresh thyme. And next, we'll add a, about a quarter cup of, of very good olive oil. And simply whisk that together. Now we're going to take the beets out of the oven. I can tell the beets are done because a, a, a knife pierces the beet very, very easily. They're very tender inside. And you simply place the beet inside of the towel and you peel the skin. It's much easier to peel them with a the towel because the skin slips right off, doesn't uh, stain your fingers. And now we're just going to slice the beets. We're just going to cut them right in half. And with the beets, we're going to place um, some of the fresh figs that were sliced, that were halved. And then we're going to add our flavored honey, flavored with a thyme and lavender. And we'll just mix that up. It's all coated. And now these are going to be put right into the oven. Uh, 350 degree oven, uh, and they'll take uh, approximately eight minutes. And now we're gonna dress our salad, uh, Point Reyes Farmstead Blue Cheese. We're gonna add that to our salad greens from our Stanford Inn Gardens. We're gonna season the salad with a little salt, a little pepper, and then just simply add the dressing. And now we're gonna get the beets and, and figs from the oven. Ooh, they're nice roasted and caramelized. And we'll just place those right around our, our beautiful salad. A little of the liquor from the beets and figs is great, just drizzled right around the, the edge of the plate. And we have some uh, fresh ingredients we brought from the garden, the fresh corn, the fresh tomatillos. We're going to make a roasted corn sope uh, garnished with uh, tomatillo salsa. And we're going to start by browning uh, fresh corn on, on the stovetop. One cup of corn kernels. Oh, about a teaspoon of olive oil. And now our corn is perfectly browned. It's got a little bit of color and just enough to add a little sweetness. And we will add one quarter cup of sliced scallion, two and a half cups of corn masa, two tablespoons of olive oil, teaspoon and a half of salt, warm water, and we're going to add just enough so it comes together in a bowl. We're making a, 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 dough, a basic dough. Could actually be used for making tortillas or sopes. And you actually take the dough and you work it lightly in your hands. Okay, very, very simply. And press it out into a small cake. And that's the sope. And now we're going to cook our sopes up. A small amount of canola or vegetable oil and add the soap base.
And our sopes are, are done now. Well, they simply just need to come right off and get put on the plate. And now we're going to make the tomatillo salsa. Uh, first, we're going to start off with a jalapeno chili. One jalapeno chili, uh, seeded and ribbed. Two cloves of garlic, fresh garlic. Uh, two cups of whole, fresh tomatillos. Um, four, four nice sized sprigs of cilantro. And we'll just add those right, right to the uh, Cuisinart. And two tablespoons of fresh lime juice. That's about a teaspoon of salt and let it spin. That's the salsa. Very simple, uh, simple garnish to uh, this Mexican dish. All we need to do is garnish them. I've got some pinto beans that have been cooked ahead of time already, all warm and ready to go. And to top off, we've got this beautiful tomatillo salsa to garnish with array of edible flowers and that's the dish. My name is Andrew Field. I'm the pastry chef here at the Ravens restaurant. I just came here recently from San Francisco. Uh, I've always had a reverence for life and an uh, interest in ecology, uh, along with my interest in the culinary arts and food, and working here has really given me opportunities to sort of come full circle and bring those things together. I actually wanted to work in organic agriculture and I had majored in soil science before um, I decided to go on to the food arts. Um, my influences in my style are definitely um, eclectic. Today I'm going to be doing a vegan applesauce cake, which will be flavored with orange zest and some warm fall spices, uh, as well as fresh blackberries that I will be picking from our own gardens here. So I'm going to be looking for some choice sweet berries to go along with my cake. Definitely a better selection here than the grocery store. So we've got some fresh berries, found a little fresh mint. Let's go make some dessert. So now I'm going to be preparing my cake. The first thing I'm going to do is combine my dry ingredients. I'm combining my whole wheat pastry flour and unbleached white flour. These are, of course, organic flours that we're using today. Uh, I have some baking soda and baking powder, a little bit of evaporated cane juice. I'm just going to sift them. Then my next step, I'm going to combine the moist ingredients. So I have some applesauce previously prepared, canola oil. This is some maple syrup, vanilla extract, some orange zest, and some orange juice. And I also have some spices here. This is cinnamon, cardamom, and nutmeg, which I've freshly grated. until they're nicely emulsified together. Then I'll just pour the wet ingredients right into the dry. Whisk them together until they're well combined. I have a springform pan, which I have prepared with a little bit of oil spray and a lining of parchment paper. And once we've got it in the pan, we're just going to put it in a 350 degree oven. It'll take about 25 minutes to bake.
So it's been about 25 minutes and our cake is finished. We're going to remove it from the oven and just set it aside to cool. So our cake should be cool enough to handle now. I'm just going to run a knife around the edge, make sure it's loose. going to cut a nice wedge from the cake. Go right here on our plate. Berries that we picked earlier. It's a simple blackberry puree that you can sweeten uh, as you please, a little bit of sugar or agave syrup. Decorate our cake with a little bit of powdered sugar. Spoon our blackberry mixture right on the plate there. A sprig of fresh mint for decoration. And we're all set. Hippie Gourmet, my favorite TV show.